This is the Lorraine Motel, the place in Memphis, Tennessee, where on April 4th, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. <laughs> Flash forward nearly 50 years, this is also the Lorraine Motel, built on stage at Lawrenceville's Aurora Theater. The mountaintop takes audiences inside room 306 for the final few hours of Dr. King's life. This isn't the I have a dream king. This is a more radical king. This is king, the man, not the myth. I want people to see that this extraordinary man who is actually quite ordinary achieved something so great that he actually created a fundamental shift in how we as a people interact with each other. That's a beautiful thing. And I want people in the audience to be like, if this man who is so, so much a human being can achieve such great things that I, as this, you know, complicated human being, can create great things too. Award-winning playwright, screenwriter, television showrunner, producer, director, actress, Katori Hall is one of the most influential and phenomenal black women working in the entertainment industry today. It is evident from the body of work that Katori Hall has produced that she has found immense success in writing from the perspective of the African-American experience, particularly from that of black womanhood. And that is something she is very proud of. I think I'm a political person. So I think obviously that carries into my writing. You know, I continue to examine issues of race, whether they be past or present or in the future, because I just know that the seeds of it are still growing um, in, our, in our world. And that desire to use the stage and screen to elevate black voices has made Katori Hall a force to be reckoned with in the entertainment arena, with her list of accomplishments being quite extensive, including two NAACP Image Award nominations, two Tony nominations, winning the Laurence Olivier Award, and winning a Pulitzer Prize. She is also currently the executive producer, writer, and showrunner for the hit TV series, P-Valley. But who is Katori Hall? What is her story? And what impact did her earlier work have on making her one of the most successful black women in the entertainment industry today? Katori Hall admits that even though she started out focused on black womanhood, she aims to portray all black life, even the marginalized folks within a marginalized community, she said, referring to her play titled The Hot Wing King, which focuses on two gay men, and her 2015 play titled Pussy Valley, which fo features a non-binary black character. I want to poke into the cracks and crevices that even the larger black community wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable with. I am digging into all these characters I have wanted to honor all my life. Katori Hall was born in Memphis, Tennessee on May 10, 1981. She spent the first five years of her life in Orange Mound, not the best part of Memphis, she notes. Then her family moved to Raleigh, a wealthier part of Memphis. They were one of three black families that moved in, and integration wasn't easy. Sometimes I got called the N-word at school from kids I grew up with from kindergarten, she yeah, said. The neighborhood kids, there were a lot of incidents that occurred where we came up against, you know, a lot of opposition to us being there from other kids, from like people like, I remember one incident specifically when my sister and I, we were playing in our front yard, you know, playing hide, go seek, whatever, whatever. And these white guys in a, a white pickup truck, I'm like, what is this Mississippi burning? But anyway, you know, they're rolling down the street and they throw like a glass bottle at us and scream nigger. And I remember being so like, what, what is that? What is that anger? What is that lack of understanding? What is that ignorance? that has just occurred to me, you know? And um, I remember my sister and I, we really didn't talk about it. And I don't even know if she, she remembers, you know? Because when things like that happen, you try to either, it, it's either emblazoned in your mind or you try to forget it, you repress it. So um, I remember, you know, at, the, at a very early age coming to terms with the fact that my life is going to be different because I, ha I am, of a different color. She graduated from Craigmont High School as the first African-American valedictorian at her high school and got a full scholarship to Columbia University. She graduated from Columbia with her BA in African-American Studies in 2003. She also received her MFA in 2005 from the American Repertory Theater at Harvard University. And in 2009, she also received another master's degree from Juilliard. 
So let's talk a little bit about your FUBU kind of scenario because you do a lot of for us, by us creativity, baby. That's what you do. <laughs> and, and I find it really fascinating because it feels like you went to almost every single Ivy League institution. I mean, you have degrees from Juilliard, Columbia, and Harvard. So I, I need to know from you, baby, did you ever feel pressured to create under the white gaze? Not Never. gays with the, y, the YS, but the gays, the look, the stare from the white folks. Yeah. Never. I never felt like I needed to change my tongue, change my perspective, um, because I just grew up just feeling so proud to be black and Southern. When she received her admissions letter to the Juilliard School, she had only one play, Hoodoo Love, about a woman who escapes the cotton fields of Mississippi and travels to Memphis to pursue a dream of singing the blues. Interesting. I must say I had a, quite a lot of fear when I would come to the page because I, I wasn't too sure that I could do it and I wasn't too sure I was a writer. I was trying to find an acting agent, I began submitting the play to um, different contests, and, and I remember getting into um, the, the Kennedy Center. They had like an American College Theater Festival, so I ended up winning an award there, and then I submitted it to the Cherry Lane Mentor Project. I think I had, I was depressed as most young actors in New York are, and I just remember going through this space of I don't know how much longer I can hold on um, how am I going to be an artist in this city that is so freaking expensive um, and I ended up getting a, a call from um, Angelina Fiordalisi who's the artistic director of Cherry Lane and she said Lynn Nottage has picked your play to mentor for the upcoming mentor project so I was like Critics wrote that Katori Hall has a real gift for colorful, idiom-laden dialogue that tumbles from the characters' mouths like Shakespeare's prose. She also has a gift for style hopping, and Hoodoo Love's mix of earthly music and magical realism calls to mind Alice Walker by way of Sam Shepard's early rock and roll blues fantasies. That same year, she began writing The Mountaintop, inspired by her mother's stories of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The Mountaintop premiered in London in 2009 and opened on Broadway in 2011, starring Samuel L. Jackson and Angela Bassett. Now, I heard you was preaching everybody the same. Negro folk, white folk, we all alike. Well, at the most human level, we all the same. Well, one thing we all got in common. We scared, Cammie. We all scared. We're scared of each other, scared of ourselves. They just scared. Scared of losing something they've known their whole lives. Critics applauded the play, stating the soul stirring drama finds King confiding his doubts, fears, and morbid premonitions to a sassy hotel maid. A deceptively trite situation that Hall transforms into an emotionally powerful and theatrically stunning moment of truth. Katori Hall's The Mountaintop literally explodes into metaphysical magic realism, ruminating on race and politics, life and death, in ways that connect King's legacy to every person in the audience. She received the Best New Play Award at the Laurence Olivier Awards in March of 2010 for The Mountaintop, becoming the first black woman in history to win the award. The Lawrence Olivier Awards, or simply the Olivier Awards, are recognized internationally as the highest honor in British theater, equivalent to the BAFTA Awards, and are considered equivalent to Broadway's Tony Awards. And though she had received quite the list of accomplishments at such an early point in her career, Katori Hall was just getting started. The Residency 5 is about building body support, creating the same values that we put into the beginnings of this company of uh, empowering that writer completely in the process putting that writer in the middle right in the heart of it from day one the first writer who was invited into this was katori hall so when i found out that i was going to be part of residency five i was a little flabbergasted and so I remember, you know, coming into the office and sitting down and, you know, uh, Beth Whitaker and Jim, you know, sitting me down and, and being like, 
you're one of the first people that we thought for this amazing residency and we would love for you to join. I mean, you're gonna be here for five years and you're gonna be able to do three produced plays over those three years. And uh, are you ready for this ride? Would you like to go on this ride? And I was just like, hell yeah, I wanna go on this ride. And this is like, who gets that? Like what young playwright is getting three full productions of their work? <laughs> Though the artistic director of the Signature Theater called Katori Hall fierce and fearless and said Hurt Village was an incredibly powerful piece of writing, only a few critics applauded the production and several wrote reviews revealing a refusal to engage with the play and its characters. Hall responded by saying, I can't make them learn about being poor and black in Memphis, Tennessee, even as the play attempts to do just that. But that didn't stop her from moving ahead with another fearless piece of work titled our Lady of Quebejo, which did garner more critical praise. And I remember standing in front of the television in my bedroom in Memphis, Tennessee, and seeing all these brown bodies floating down the river. And I was just struck by it. it, it, it that particular vision imprinted itself on my mind and it stayed with me. I was like, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Why are these people who look like me floating down a river? It wasn't until many years later when she traveled to Rwanda that she heard of the visions at Cabejo. And I had always been wanting to write about uh, that tumultuous you know, moment in history. And I was like, this is the perfect way, this is the perfect frame to, to do so. I didn't want to do the usual, like in, you know, during the genocide, I wanted to do something that was about the before. And then she went on to write her very first musical, which proceeded to take the whole world by storm. Katori Hall stated that in 2015, the producer that had worked on her previous Broadway show, The Mountaintop, named Tali Pellman, had been given the gargantuan task of trying to turn Tina Turner's life into a musical. Pellman reached out to Hall and stated, you have a very irreverent approach to dealing with icons, and Tina always said she wanted to have a very truthful, transparent retelling of her life for the stage. Katori Hall responded by stating, when it comes to telling Turner's tumultuous and triumphant tale, I was born to lay my hands on her story. Tina is such a powerful being, beyond an icon. Her spirit, the things that she has given, not only to women, but to every human being around the world. I want you guys in this rehearsal to embrace the responsibility, the responsibility of telling this story that is going to transform people and it's going to transform Broadway. Tina had its world premiere in April 2018 in London before opening on Broadway on November 7, 2019 and was nominated for 12 Tony Awards. Yes, I said 12 Tony Awards. Its star, Adrienne Warren, won a Tony for her performance in the title role. The show, a four-decade roller coaster ride of Tina's life, unfolding on stage with the help of playwright Katori Hall. We've known her because we've known the stories, the headlines, but we don't know it like this. No, you don't know it like this. That's the thing I think that really moves audience members every night. I mean, they get up out of their seats to dance mm -hmm. with this Adrian Warren who get, is giving you like total Tina Turner. Ah! 
Katori Hall then completed her residency with her third play titled The Hot Wing King and was celebrated by her loved ones in this hilarious YouTube send-off. <laughs> Victoria, we love you. Kicking ass and taking names. I love you. I love you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congratulations on graduating. She be who? Oh, so proud of me. And the congratulations. I'm so happy to be a part of your residency. Here we go. According to the Washingtonian, the Hot Wing King is a love letter to playwright Katori Hall's family and to her hometown of Memphis. If the key to one's heart is through their stomach, it's no wonder the Hot Wing King unlocks a glimpse into the soul. The 2021 Pulitzer Committee praised the Hot Wing King as a funny, deeply felt consideration of black masculinity and how it is perceived, filtered through the experiences of a loving gay couple. I think uh, at its core, at least for me, it's a, a play about uh, family, friendship, manhood, masculinity. manhood, masculinity, and love, and all the complexities uh, of all of that and how they intersect and, and, you know, make life interesting. Broadway World stated, the miracle of this play by the brilliant Katori Hall is that it is a work that combines all the various layers and themes into one powerhouse of a unified play. And her latest work, Need No Introduction. You should know it simply by the infamous intro song. One of the absolute best intro songs to a show, in my personal opinion, done by the rapper Juicy Fruit. And if you don't know about P-Valley on Stars, you are truly missing out. According to the website Deadline, in 2009, award-winning playwright Katori Hall started research for her play Pussy Valley, which put a spotlight on the world of stripping. She stepped into the heels of these women, took pole dancing classes, and even spent her 30th birthday in the locker room of the New York City Strip Club, Sin City Bronx. On the surface, Hall's experiences to inform her play seemed like a fun adventure, but in reality, it was a cultural study to inform a more in-depth story about these women, their experiences, personal narratives, and the stigma that is often attached to their profession. The play deconstructs the stereotypes these women are often subject to and doesn't just make it about hypersexualized pole dancing. We often forget that these women are people with stories and emotions, not just objects as they are often portrayed, she says. After the play made its debut at the Mixed Blood Theater in Minneapolis in 2015, it got picked up by stars and debuted in July of 2020 and now is on its second season. Welcome from the set of Down in the Valley where the girls get naked. It's your girl, Katori Hall, the creator and showrunner of P-Valley. She is just so funny. I just love her. I myself became a huge fan of the show. I make sure not to miss a single episode, by the way, because of the diversity of characters and representation of black masculinity, including love scenes between two straight presenting black men. But for this, I went into far more detail in my previous videos. I feel that we need to normalize sex scenes of couples that are not always heterosexual. And I think Katori Hall is so genius for pushing these kinds of boundaries and for even making people uncomfortable in a good way. I was so completely blown away when I started reading about Katori Hall and all the amazing work she's done and how incredibly accomplished this woman is. I even felt a little embarrassed to be honest that I knew so little about her before starting this video but I think more people need to know how talented she truly is. So what do you think about the creator of P-Valley? Did you learn some things from this bio that maybe you didn't know before? And are you a fan of the show P-Valley? Drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts and opinions. And as always, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.